morning everyone. Welcome back to PNU Talks. I am Rex J. Bibal and I am a public school teacher at Calamba City Science Integrated School, a PNU FAL alumnus, BSc English, Honors Class Batch 2014. And I'll be with you for today's episode. Classroom assessment practices is deemed critical in any educational process for effective teaching judgments and resolutions are based on the capacity of teachers to understand their learners and to align actions with accurate and appropriate assessments. According to Gaicha in 2016, at this era of accountability, it is conceded that assessment is a powerful lever that can either boost or weaken students' learning. Children's learning and success can be supported with solid educational assessment practices. That is why it is very essential that assessments must be well-planned, well-organized, and appropriate to maintain its validity and reliability regardless of the learning modality. I am pretty sure that you know this, but for the sake of review, let's do this. There are two main categories of assessments, which are traditional and alternative. Traditional assessments are tests which usually require memorization or recalling. They are usually pen paper tests which can be multiple choice, identification, enumeration, and or matching type tests. On the other hand, alternative assessments are those which involve more modern and unconventional ways. They can be written works like compositions, term papers, reviews, letters or proposals. They can also be products such as projects, artworks, research innovations, portfolios, to name a few. And they can also be performance which includes but not limited to singing, dancing, drama, oral presentations. They can also be combinations of all of this. Commonly, we call them performance tasks or PT. More often than not, Teachers tend to bombard the class with a lot of traditional assessments because of its accuracy, validity, objectivity, and most of all, convenience in terms of checking and scoring. Furthermore, the unprecedented and detrimental COVID-19 pandemic distressed the global community and aggravated the educational problems. The pandemic urged the education systems across the globe and compelled educational leaders to shift to distance education, mainly online modality. Consequently, giving alternative assessments or performance tasks has become more challenging due to a lot of factors like unequal privileges and resources, lack of dynamics, interactions, and collaborations. But then again, there are still many teachers who are smart enough to strike a balance between written works and performance tasks. Assessment is more than just reporting and role-playing. If we just confine ourselves in the world of role plays and dramas, learning progress will be surely at risk. This is where this PNU Talks episode comes into the picture. What a pity! Taking performance tasks into a whole new level, the PNU way. To begin with, sound performance task begins with clear and appropriate learning targets. This has been elaborated by Milan in 2012 in his book, Classroom Assessment. He further adds that learning targets include both what the students know and can do and the criteria or rubric for rating student performance. Moreover, all domains of learning, cognitive, affective, psychomotor, can be targets of assessment. Likewise, multiple intelligences can also be the goals of assessment. They are verbal or linguistic, logical or mathematical, visual or spatial, musical, kinesthetic, social or interpersonal, intrapersonal, natural, and existential intelligences. I, for one, have been an advocate of bringing out and appreciating these intelligences. After all, every child is special. Every child matters. In addition, students exhibit greater interest and levels of learning 
when they are required to organize facts around major concepts and actively construct their own understanding of the concepts in a rich variety of contexts. Performance assessment requires students to structure and apply information and thereby helps to engage students in the type of learning. In my episode, maybe the phrase, the PNU way caught your attention. But don't get me wrong, Inang Pamantasan did not give any standards or matrix on assessing students' scholastic performance. I just use the PNU way because today, what I'll be sharing are my best assessment practices in my own classroom, which I both adopted and adapted from my professors when I was still in PNU as a student. I, as part of the English department's honors class, the pilot batch, we have experienced a lot of back-breaking and nerve-wracking PTs or performance tasks which played a significant role on how we've been as teachers. As a matter of fact, we have experience setting up Afro-Asian cultural booths or exhibits, diorama, speech choir, interpretative reading, speech festivals like eulogy, awards and acceptance speech, fashion show, theatrical plays. I can still remember, of course, Sepang Loka and the Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well, debates, and a lot more. Hence, when I graduated and eventually practiced my profession, I just couldn't help but pass them forward. And the good thing is that I can guide my students well since I had already experienced and I have done those tasks I'm asking them to do. Let me share some of my best PT or performance tasks in my first seven years of service in DepEd. I called the first one Cosmythology. I combined the words cosplay and mythology. Here are some of the snippets of our output when we were in our last year in college. The students must design and make a costume out of recyclable or low-cost materials to imitate mythological characters, gods, and goddesses. But it doesn't end there. This is a melting pot of various skills like photography, digital arts and editing, video editing, relating mythological allusions to present times. They may even produce a short film, comics, or a magazine. We did this in mythology class under Professor Raimundo. But here is an example of a proto short film of my students to be followed by a presentation of a magazine type cosmetology output which I found truly commendable. Gods and goddesses, creators of ambiguous reigns and exquisite creatures, heirs of the ultimatum of the universe throughout life and death, space and time. Gods and goddesses, inhuman characters that can control the world, but a sword too many can kill a rat, and so will the gods too many to hold a man. One for each aspect and one for each ruler. Who is the best to hold the board? Who will rule? Who is it me? Two rulers with identical perspectives, but different allies are clashing for each throne. And to behold the power in the unity of water, Neptune together with his allies of Surges. I'm summoning my allies! To the god who will battle Neptune and strike a lightning enforcement to overrule the world, Jupiter has come together with his allies.
one is diorama. This is a miniature model representing a scene with three dimensional figures. We constructed our diorama when we were in fourth year college, still, of course, with the guidance of Professor Raimundo. We were assigned to study and make a representation of different mythologies. But for us, it's Philippine mythology. My classmate in white, Jasper Angeles, was the one who conceptualized and constructed the diorama. Thanks, Jasper. Of course, in order for my students to study more about Afro-Asian culture, they should experience making a diorama themselves too. Here we go. Here are their magnificent works. Starting with... Third, collaborative newsletter publishing. Professor Oxenio harnessed our potential in journalism when we were his students in PNU. Thus, when I handle English and media and information literacy classes, I make sure that I embed journalism. Not just the typical journalism, but a bit more of responsible campus journalism. In my lessons and for my final performance tasks, I ask them to craft four-page school paper or newsletter. This is a group activity that requires them to write news, editorial, feature, science and technology, and health articles, doing research, interviewing, planning, writing, copy reading, layouting, and designing are among the skills targeted in this assessment. Imagine the fulfillment the students would feel when instead of just being a consumer of media, they become media producers and practitioners in an instant. Four, picture feature. This is a tourism promotion PT. They are asked to choose exceptional pictures and to write an accurate and convincing feature article about the local destination of their choice. This does not just improve their writing and designing skills, but this PD can also boost our local tourism since they have the option to upload it in their timeline or Facebook page. And now we're down to number five, the leaf art. This is a pity I ask my students to work on as my arts integration after reading The Last Leaf by O. Henry. They have the freedom to choose a subject and collect fresh or dry leaves, twigs, flowers to color and to design their masterpiece with. Don't forget to remind them to ask for permission before picking leaves and flowers for they might be in trouble with the plantitas. Sixth, Calligraphy Arts. In PNU, our literature teachers would always ask us to note down, memorize, or recite literary lines or what we often call immortal lines. Who can forget, it was not quite five and the bread was not yet ready. She smells like morning when the papayas are in bloom. To be or not to be? That is the question. Okay. In my classroom, integration and multiple intelligences prevail. In here, after reading The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, they make an art out of the literary lines focusing on drafting and calligraphy. It always feels fantastic to bring out the best in them. Seventh, Photo Gallery. During semestral break, holy week, or Christmas vacation, I keep my students academically engaged by asking them to capture scenes and moments aligned with the given themes. It can be bayanihan, unity and diversity, human and nature. Then as they come back, they are asked to bring printed photos and the class will set up a gallery for their masterpieces so that other students across grade levels can appreciate the parade of scenes and memories. 
And you know what? I'll never get tired of being amazed every single day. They are so great. Eight, speech fest. Walking down memory lane, who can forget the excitement about Professor Thay Manisha's speech fest? Eulogy, presenting and accepting an award, informative, persuasive speeches, name it. Her classroom has it. Well, I played Russell in the movie app, The Wilderness Explorer from Tribe 54. Hi, Mom Tay, can you still remember this? So, I can say that my classroom seems Mama Nisha's satellite class. My learners also performed various speeches like this. And they would also impersonate famous personalities and literary characters. You know what? Sometimes other classes are wondering what's going on? Why are they dressed up? But you know what? It's just a simple performance task day. And they really exert effort every time we have a performance task day. As a matter of fact, from these classroom PTs, I was able to see a lot of potential. I trained them and so far, we have bagged seven championships in various speech competitions outside school. Moreover, as a trainee and auxiliary member of the PNU DebSoc from 2012 up to 2014, Sir Ali has indoctrinated us to proliferate critical thinking and the art of debate. Hats off, Sir Ali, and to all your alumni trainers. I am no expert, but I tried my very best to introduce Asian Parliamentary, British Parliamentary, and Oxford Oregon debate to my classes. Fortunately, after training a team, we had clutched the gold in a Luzon-wide debate tournament. 10. Blackout Poetry Blackout poetry is when a page of text, usually an article from a newspaper, is completely blacked out, colored over with permanent markers so that it is no longer visible, except for a select few words. When only these words are visible, a brand new story is created from the existing text. Plain and simple, there's a story that can glow in the dark. Move, laugh, play, think win-win. Provide them outdoor games which themes and concepts are still aligned with your target competencies. Their enthusiasm and thunderous laughter while learning say it all. Remember, learning tribes more when they are having fun and when anxiety is low. In this digital era, we should not forget the digital arts. The students' ideas and creativity are just infinite. They must be heard and seen. Another one is a shadow play. We clearly remember when we set up shadow plays using the overhead projectors in PNU. Of course, my students using their own original puppets, flashlights, phones, and some fabrics were able to nail it too. This is an Afro-Asian lit class, a shadow play of Shakuntala. When students are having too much exposure on computer screens, Time out! They can go manual or traditional. The timeless pop-up book, flip book, is also an option. Prof. Alido and Prof. Papango succeeded in bringing out our passion in literature. I can still remember when we wrote our own poetry and stories such as our own Desiderata. Therefore, my English classes know very well our Terminal PT, a literary folio which contains their originally written poems, songs, flash fictions, haikus, short story, comics, photography, cartoons, and even confessions. Check this out. Lastly, the Enduring Speech Choir and Dramatic Choric, which gave more emphasis on their interpretation of a literary piece applying suprasegmental features and elements of music. The next slide would be a portion of our output when we were in PNU in a subject under Professor Tubo, to be followed by the photos and videos of my team when we were hailed champion in Dramatic Choric in the whole city division.
Mabubuhay ang baitik na wala ang tula. Mabubuhay ang tula na ikaw! Ikaw! Ikaw ay wala! Ako ang nagdaming malaya! Ako ang nagdaming buhay! Ako ang buhay na wala ang hanggang buhay! Buhay! Na ibinigay na lang sana sa anak ko na matay sa ating kanil. In school, we don't just celebrate perfect quizzes and exam scores. We also do rejoice when students explore to find and optimize their own potential. Let us not forget to always link our PTs with the learning competencies and objectives. Because, after all, we don't do it for mema. Mema lang. Huwag lang di makaraos. What is the best and the most effective strategy? I'll answer that with a wisdom from my former professor, Dr. Corazon Sigua. She said, Teachers, there is no best strategy, only appropriate ones. Our school is not one size fits all. Let us not measure the greatness of a fish by asking it to climb a tree. Let us provide diverse opportunities to our learners to recalibrate their skills, to advance their intelligences, and to celebrate their talents. So once again, thank you PNU Inang Pamantasan for letting us experience the wonders of the wide array of performance tasks that we had when we were still in your cradle. Our perpetual gratitude. So, paano? As we welcome our students back to our classrooms, handa ka na ba? Kapunta pa lang tayo sa exciting part. Don't miss a second. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for... What a pity! Instead, go for whoa, what a pity! Take your performance tasks into a whole new level. This has been Rex J. Bibal. Nagsasabing lagi nating dalhin ang ilaw mula kay inang pamantasan na magsisibing tanglaw para sa bata at para sa bayan. Maraming salamat po.